Hello, and welcome to Lunch and Learn Bible Study. I am Pastor Bruce McKinney, and I will be your instructor for today. And today we are going to be studying about love and marriage. This is the second part of a three-part series that we are doing. And if you missed the first part, you can just go on to Vernon Park uh, website, vpcog.org, and you'll be able to catch the uh, first part of uh, this series. So before we get into our Bible study, and this is something you should do even in your own personal Bible study, we're going to pray first. So let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for who you are and what you are in our lives. We pray, dear Lord, that you open up our hearts, our minds, and our understanding to what it is that you have for us today, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we're going to go on and get into our study. Uh, be, but before we get into the actual Bible, we're going to talk a little statistics. I have this particular slide entitled Holiday Love. And in that, um, I found some, re I found, in doing my research, I found some information that said that 40% of all engagements occur between November and February. So I call that holiday love. And what happens in those months? Well, November, you have Thanksgiving. And December, of course, you have Christmas and actually, actually New Year's Eve. And then January is New Year itself. And then February, you have the ultimate romantic day, which is February 14th. And I just want to give a um, reminder to the brothers who are married that um, you don't want to forget this day. And even those who are engaged or dating, you, you don't want to forget this day. Don't blow it, okay? So I uh, just want to put that out there. So we're going to go on into our um, Bible study. We're going to look at Genesis, the second chapter, the 22nd verse, and it reads like this. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and, and he brought her to the man, okay? So the scripture is telling us that God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. So let's see what the reaction of the man was to this woman, okay? In uh, Genesis uh, 2.23, it reads like this. The man said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. So notice Adam's reaction. I have here, evaluate your relationship. The man said, this is what he said about the woman that God had brought to him. This is bone of my bone. She, she, she came out of me. It's something in her that is that, that was in me, that's in me. And he says, and flesh of my flesh, she resembles me. She looks like me. She shall be called woman for she was taken out of man. Now, what I want you to understand, a few verses ahead of, of this, uh, in particular the 20th verse, uh, God had Adam to name all the animals, and Adam named all the animals. And then at the end of that 20th verse, it says, but for Adam, uh, there was no suitable helper found. In other words, there was no one compatible to Adam. There was no companionship to Adam. So Adam had the unusual opportunity to search every living creature on the earth, and after doing that, found no one that was compatible to him. And then God brought someone to him. And there's a, there's a message in that. We'll talk about that next week. But God brought the woman to him, and his reaction was he evaluated the situation. He looked at her, and he, he said about her being resembling like him. She came out of him, flesh of my flesh. And and then he said, this is now, meaning finally, out of all those animals that I named, and here's a creature that is compatible with me. So let's go on, okay? And we're going to talk about evaluate your relationship. And I'm talking in particular to those couples that are engaged or dating and maybe moving toward a more serious uh, relationship. Let's take a look at some things that you should be uh, evaluating about your relationship. The first question I have, is there something 
about you that is in this person. Remember, uh, Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Okay, so is there something in this person that is about you, that is in you? Okay, do they have uh, similar tastes and things? Do they have uh, similar goals in mind? Is there, uh, do they have certain uh, passion? Uh, you know, are you both saved? Things of that nature. You're looking uh, at this point to see where the similarities are. And, and the next question is very similar to this. In what ways are you compatible? Uh, you and your fiance compatible. In other words, how do you all connect? Okay, how do you, um, how is it that, you know, you, how is it that you and this person are um, able to work with one another? You're compatible. Uh, you know, right now we have a lot of different uh, devices that we have. Some people have one product and some people have another, but you can't always take something that's made for one product and put it with another because what? It is not compatible. It does not, it's not made to work with that. So is your fiance compatible with you? Someone that can work with you and, and things of that nature. Okay. And then there's this question, in what ways are you all different? What is different about you all? Okay, you need to evaluate those things. Is this person a um, is this person a person that likes sports and you don't particularly care for it? Now that's not a deal breaker, but you need to be aware of that. You need to be you need to understand because that is what you are going to take into a marriage if if it goes to that point. If you engage, obviously you're in planning for a marriage. So these are things that you are, some of the things that you are looking at. Believe me, in this uh, brief video, there's no way we have enough time to even scratch the surface of the things you should be looking for. But these are just some things to give you an idea to start the process of what you should be looking for. So let's go on. And then... There's this question of how often do you experience conflict? Now, let me tell you, with human beings, there is going to be conflict, whether it's intentional or unintentional. We're, we're just different. Uh, we see things from different perspective. Um, your perspective of it may be different from my perspective of it. And the fact is, neither one of us uh, are completely right. So that's that's the thing about it. But how often do you experience conflict? Is this something that happens a lot? If it's happening a, a lot, then there is an issue there. And there's an issue that needs to be dealt with before you move this relationship further. Because marriage doesn't fix plot problems. A lot of times it locks them in. So I want you to understand that. Um, and then the next question is, how do you work out the conflict? How do you work it out? Okay. Is it that you just uh, go into your corners and just forget about it? Uh, do you try to work it out where both of you all uh, win in a loving way? Um, so how do you do that? That's the important thing is how do you work out your conflict? So, there's another, there's, here's another question. How do your friends and family feel about your relationship? Now, you may say, well, it doesn't matter what they think. Well, it sort of does because other people see things that you don't see because you're, you know, you're googly eyed and, you know, this person is, all you can see is the good things and you're missing some of the other things that are, are obvious to other people, I heard one um, radio personality on on Moody, matter of fact, say that, uh, and they, they gave this prayer, and I thought it was such a beautiful prayer. And um, they said, and I think it was, anyway, they said this in the prayer. They said, Lord, open their eyes so they can see what everybody else so plainly sees. And this is what... Uh, you need to, to, to look at how do your friends and family feel 
about your relationship. And maybe that should be even reversed. How do your family and friends feel about your relationship? So let's go on. Now, there are some red flags in the relationship that you should look for. And here's one. Your fiance wants all your time. You spend very little time with your friends and family. That is a pushing away. That's an that's a isolation of you. Okay. Are you being isolated just for this person? Okay. Now let's understand. Yes, you all are in relationship. You're going to spend a lot of time with them. Okay. But it should not be to the point where you are isolated from your family and your friends. You got to understand one thing the enemy does is to cause separation. Okay. God brings people together. He brings families together. He brings friends together. But the enemy will separate. Okay. And what you need to be aware of is this is something that it's just happening because it's a new relationship or is this a pattern? Is this person always trying to pull you away, always taking up all your time? So that is a red flag that you should look out for. Another red flag in the, in the case of women, women, okay? Um, are you paying for most or all of your dates? Are you the one footing the expenses? That's a big red flag. Because if you are, why are you doing that? Is it because, and the, the next question said, uh, you work and he does not. So we'll talk about that. But is it that, you know, you're the one working and they're not working or what? what's really going on? Are you, are, in, in other words, I'll put it out to, to you like this. Are you paying for love? So that needs to be evaluated. The other thing that needs to be evaluated, and this is the uh, last thing that uh, we will talk about today, and that is you work and he does not. I'm talking specifically to the women that may be listening uh, or, or watching this video. You work and he does not. Let me tell you something. Things happen in life. I know people lose their jobs. I have lost uh jobs in the past and my wife has worked for a while and I took care of things until I can get back on my feet and everything like that. But those are temporary situations. Okay. When you all are dating, when you all are in your, your, your stage of getting to know one another, there should be a difference there. There should be something that this person, yes, they, they could lose their job, but then they should be actively looking for one and find one, especially now. I mean, you can get a job almost anywhere now. So uh, that should not be an excuse. Uh, so if you're working, he does not, That that's a red flag. Okay, I'm not telling you just married for money or anything like that. I'm just telling you that that is a red flag because let me tell you something. Love does not pay the bills. You cannot go to the utility company and say, my husband loves me. Will that keep our lights on? They'll say something like, well, that's nice, but you got to pay this bill or we're going to turn them off. Okay. So love does not pay the bills. Money does. So I just want to leave you with those thoughts and you can play back the video and review it and share it with others that may be engaged or things like that. And prayerfully, it will be able to help them. So I want to thank you for watching our Lunch and Learn Bible study today. And I pray God's blessing on your life and be blessed.